Every vocation in Dragon's Dogma 2 is honestly incredible in its own right and really fun to play. Powerful too, and I'm sure you have your favourite. It's just a shame then that you have a 90% chance of being wrong. <sighs> oh yes. Here we go. Hello then, my fellow Arisen. Welcome today as I want to talk vocations. More specifically, the five that I believe to be the best vocations. And by best, you might wonder what exactly I'm quantifying that as. Is it the most useful, highest damaging, the well roundestest, the best to have on your bomb, the most fun? And to all of those potential metrics, I simply say, yes. This is a kind of overall bundle of relative merit. Which sounds like a really boring anime attack name to yell out. Overall bundle of relative merit! In any case, uh, let's get this show on the road then. I've of course given every vocation a good old go and have both uh, Cotton and Hollow who have done the same gathered thoughts from you guys as well and all in all, I think it's actually perhaps quite cut and dry. And I do want to stress, reiterate that as I said at the uh, they're all really fun. I think the combat is the shining strength in Dragon's Dogma 2. I don't think I've ever experienced such a physical feeling a combat system with some serious weight that can simultaneously make you feel like an absolute champion badass master of death and an absolute idiot moron getting kick ragdolled on the ground by a bunch of goblins because you made a mistake. It's quite the dynamic if I'm honest with you and I really love it. There is just this beautiful weight and purpose and deliberacy to it all and I think while definitely a certain uh, group of people are probably hate it, I think everyone who does appreciate it really does. So with that all said then, at number five, I have Mage. And this one is interesting, perhaps the most curious choice on the list, because if I was to strictly rank the vocations as the best for the Arisen you 2 players, well, Mage would be ninth. Trickster being 10th, don't get me wrong, I think, you know, in, in theory, Trickster is one of the coolest ideas for a class ever. I just kind of think it's in the wrong game for how it works. In any case, yeah, but you know why it's here. You know why it's at 5th. You know why it's made it so high up this list. You kind of need one. It's the most useful vocation in the game. It offers so much, and that's a really cool marketed improvement on the first game where it kind of was just worse sorcerer. Uh, the various buffs, debuffs, the heals, the support, the boons, even the damage it can do with the offensive spells it does have access to is nothing to sniff at. It's a unique super meister skill in celestial that word is really solid too. It's visually amazing and hey, it has access to levitate, which you'll see us talk about a little bit more later to not spoil anything, even though I just literally spoiled something, is phenomenal and the single best out of combat skill in the game. In any case, you kind of don't want to be a mage, but you never want to be without one, and it deserves its place here. It is the champion pawn class. Then we go to fourth, where we have Magic Archer. This, outside of it just being really freaking cool, like it just oozes style, you know? That kind of like fantasy of drawing back energy arrows and just firing them off out of nowhere, no quiver needed. Yeah, that's very, very cool, but the thing that gets it here is simple, raw output. Even ignoring Martyr's Bolt, which can one-shot everything in the game. Like, I'm not exaggerating here, it can and will one-shot Every enemy in the game, including the final boss, it's a little bit silly, and while doing so, it looks 
gorgeous, that flying web of light beams, my word. Its other skills are still absolutely ridiculously impressive. The bouncing arrows in a cave, your guided detonating fire arrow missile. There is just a lot going on here. The ranged heal revive on pawn that you can use as a trick to essentially never have to deal with fall damage no matter how far you actually fall. There is a lot built into Magic Archer and it does it all very, very well. And I will say it was very close between Magic Archer and Mystic Spearhand here, but you just can't ignore the damage discrepancy. It really is that massive. Mystic, by the way, would be six if I was to extend it that far. Coming in then at third, it is, uh, as much as I hate to do this, I kind of wanted to put it second because it's my favorite. You're already seeing it. Sorcerer. Now, the reason it is here, similar to Magic Archer, is it simply does too much damage to ignore, but it also has a lot more. Orgrel Flare is the single most powerful skill in the game. And, well, I guess technically Martyr's Bolt is, but Martyr's Bolt kills you after more than one use and you need to go rest or have an all heal or a wake stone. Whereas Orgrel Flare is just a basic skill that you can spam and then watch the fireworks as everything melts. It's just too good to ignore. But past that, the rest of the Sorcerer's Arsenal is really strong. Yes, it's sadly missing a lot of spells from Dragon's Dogma 1, but I think anyone who thinks the casting isn't a better experience in Dragon's Dogma 2 is absolutely drowning in nostalgia goggles because that's just not the case. Quick spell and uh, the changes to the raw pace of it have made all the difference. You really feel a lot more active, being able to manage your own stamina with the regen. Both Meteoron and Maelstrom are superb Meister skills for pure sorcerers to actually cast. The only downside, of course, is they do less damage and take longer than Orgrel Flare, but that's mostly Orgrel Flare just being an outlier. But even ignoring in combatness, well, Levitate, again, the single best out of combat skill, exploring, getting around, and just generally being a cheeky little arisen with. It is amazing, and it's done so well in Dragon's Dogma 2 compared to the first getting a little speed boost when you first go into it, gaining that much height, the control, it's just glorious and so much fun. Then we go on to uh, second place in Thief. Yeah, you knew this was going to be here, and it's for a lot of reasons. Firstly, this is the fastest vocation. You can just move across raw terrain, even without using stamina, with just dash, carve, dash, carve. And then, using stamina, you can do your rush, stab, rush, stab, rush, stab. And then the actual damage output from its two main methods of doing so, which is your Skull Splitter, your Beyblade up, Beyblade down, Insanity. And then, I don't know, put on your Immortality button in formless faint. Yeah, sure, it drains stamina, but barely any, and then you just don't die. And then past that, while that's on, you do your exploding fire blades. You don't take damage because formless faint dodges your own backfire damage, so you can just spam nutty explosions that, again, absolutely obliterate everything. It's ridiculous. So you've got insane mobility, insane damage, and then you have utility in the fact that you can just steal whatever you need from any enemy, such as farming worm life crystals by just attacking it with Carve and using the passive that has a chance to rob enemies when you attack it with Carve. That is a trifecta recipe for an absolutely superb experience and vocation. And yeah, it's hard not to see thieves as well, overall the best vocation. Except you might be thinking, wait, overall best, but this is second place. And yes, true. It's hard to argue that the best vocation isn't the vocation that can be every other vocation on this list, because by definition, it combines all their strengths. Warfarer. And again, you might be thinking, hang on, hang on, Warfarer takes a huge base stat loss to do this, and it doesn't get to use Meister skills. While true, a, the game is so easy and enemies die so quickly that the stat loss doesn't matter. You don't take enough damage for the defense loss to matter. It's a non-factor. And then B, most of the Meister skills aren't better than your regular skills on the vocations that you really want to combo here. Such as my take on Warfarer, comboing Orgrel Flare, Sorcerer with an Archie Staff, with Skull Splitter, Thief with your daggers. 
Those two together both levitate the movement speed. I mean, every pro I just explained of both these vocations that take spots two and three just come together to make something greater than the sum of their parts, and the sum of their parts was already phenomenal. But even beyond that, just looking at Warfarer in general, it comes with incredible augments that, again, most vocations do, so that's sort of an even draw across the board, but still really helps you manage your stamina with the less stamina skill cost and lowers your weight by a whole tier just for free, but past that, it's just an incredibly creative experience. I know a lot of people think you should have more skill options than three, and while I can see the merit in that, I think the fact that you only have three skills to choose from and you really have to think about the combo and synergy and goal of what you're actually working out is really nice. It focuses you. And when you have access to every other skill on every other vocation, practically, yeah, you really have a lot of combinations, even with just three, and you can do some really fun, fancy things. But beyond any of this, right, beyond the actual effectiveness of getting to wield every class's core skills, including every class's actual skills, swapping between them all, having as many weapons as equipped, covering every situation, yada yada, beyond that, you get to wear any armor set in the game, which, let's be honest, is peak fashion dogma and the real champion reason for using Warfarer. Again, with the game being as easy as it is, ignoring the stat loss, if you don't care about your Meister skill, you are better off playing Warfarer to then play your actual favorite vocation, don't put rearmament as one of your skills, take four skills from that vocation, just be that vocation, but then be able to equip any armor in the game and look exactly how you want, and suddenly you've reached peak endgame experience. So, yeah, it really is hard to say that anything other than Warfarer is ultimately the overall best vocation in Dragon's Dogma 2, and I think it's a very fun creative one. We don't really see this kind of thing often. So that's my thoughts on it all and how it boils down, but I would love to hear yours too. And as I say this, and again to reiterate, I think they all really are quite good, and I don't think you can go wrong here. These are obviously just my thoughts. For now then, a like if you enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more. Consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below. And until we meet again, a god bye. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is uh goodbye